Today is Monday, August 20th, and this is the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council. Um, before we get started, I'd like to have everybody stand and uh, do and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay, um, while well, I wait for Alderman Dunn to get to his seat, uh, Mayor Morley is away on personal business, and all the other uh, older aldermen are uh, not here either, so I'm going to be the uh, uh, MC of uh, Master of Ceremonies tonight. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to ask uh, Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Sabatino. Here. Deuter. Here. Dunn. Here. Leader. <clears throat> Here. Polemski. Here. Graham. Absent. Toledo. Here. York. Here. Levin. Here. Park. Here. Conquist. Absent. Kennedy. Here. Milliner. Absent. Brennan. Here. Eleven present. Three absent. <laughs> Okay, 11 present, three absents. We have a quorum for this evening. So um, moving right along, the third item on our agenda tonight is receipt of written communication from the public. Is there anybody in the audience tonight who has some written communication that they wish to share with the city clerk? Seeing none, we'll move right along then. Um, item four, uh, agenda item four is our public forum. Our public forum uh, is a time when we allow the public to um, address the, uh, the chairman. Um, and uh, you have three minutes to present that. You'll be um, using the microphone to my right or to the left side of the room. And um, city uh, clerk, um, do we have anybody who signed up for uh, yes, public we comment do. tonight? Yeah. Yes, okay. we do, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Mary Foley. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with some of my neighbors to address the and status. You'll need to, can you um, just state your name, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. My name is Mary Foley. I live at 101 North Clinton Avenue. I'm here with my neighbors to address the status of the property adjacent to the railroad tracks along First Street from Poplar to Geneva. We've lived in our house over 19 years. Some of our neighbors have been here over 40 years. Since we moved in, we have regularly asked the city about trimming the bushes and cleaning the vines, the weeds, the garbage, the mud, the stones, the rocks, and other debris that have accumulated and been dumped along the bushes. We were told first this was not city property. Then we were told the city property only extends to the bushes. When First Street was torn up last year to lay pipes for the detention pond, we were told the bushes would be replaced. Then we were told the bushes weren't damaged. The city didn't want to spend money to replace them. When we asked about trimming and cleaning up the area, we were told it wouldn't be worth trimming the bushes because the bushes were in such poor condition they needed to be replaced. We were also told the railroad would not allow non-railroad employees to work on the south side of the bushes due to li liability issues. Yet we know from longtime residents the city once took care of those bushes. We also know that prior to tearing up First Street last summer for the Golden Meadow Detention Pond, city workers came and cut down some of the weedy trees to the same level as the bushes. While there are only eight houses that face First Street between Poplar and Geneva, First Street's a main route for those going to East End Park for soccer, baseball, swimming, not to mention the neighbors who live in the surrounding area. This is also the first thing people see on the train as they come into Elmhurst. A friend of mine from Wheaton once commented to me, she was surprised that Elmhurst would allow the area along the Union Pacific train tracks to look so seedy. The city of Elmhurst has an ordinance that says it's unlawful for any property within the city to become or remain a chronic nuisance. Look at the railroad property between Geneva and Poplar. There are piles of railroad ties randomly strewn among the bushes. There are bags of garbage tucked into the bushes. Weeds and vines grow wild. The railroad is our neighbor, just like the city of Elmhurst is our neighbor. Neither one of them wants to claim responsibility for the condition of this piece of land. However, the city and the railroad properties along Park appear well-groomed and maintained. 
Most of the properties on First Street between York and Poplar also seem well cared for. So we know that the city and the railroad can work together when they want to. Isn't it time this area along First Street between Poplar and Geneva got the same level of care? Thank you. Thank Joe, you. Joe, um, I believe it's Soto. You can just state your name for the record, Joe. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Joe Sudo. Uh, I live at 375 East First, next to Tom and Mary. And uh, I'd just like to reiterate all the things that Mary said and uh, also add a couple of my own things. Uh, we've been there 31 years. When we moved in there, the bushes along that stretch were well cared for and always, uh, you know, they'd, they'd have guys go in there uh, about every three years, trim all the bushes, take all the garbage out, and they always looked good. And around uh, 2000, 1999, whatever, I think they started using landscaping crews to come in, uh, uh, separate contractors, and uh, I don't think they get any oversight uh, in what they do. And uh, it's just really gone to the dogs. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I've talked to people uh, that work for the city when I'm out there and they're out there and they say, well, there's no budget for this. And, uh, you know, I, I think there should be a budget for it. There must have been a budget at one time because they did care for it at one time very well. And uh, I think they need to reinstate that budget and take care of that. Uh, the trains in the city are our neighbors across the street and we have to take care of our properties and they have to take care of theirs. And we'd appreciate it if they'd at least do a better job of it. Thank you. Joe Webb. Uh, it's Jay Webb and I'm uh, the president of the uh, York High School Alumni Association. Uh, earlier this week, I, uh, through your admin, I uh, submitted a letter of invitation to you all. I hope you received it for the alumni of the York uh, uh, Centennial Celebration that's coming up at the end of the month, end of September, excuse me. Uh, and I just wanted to come here and publicly invite everyone, and I wanted to stress publicly that this is not just a York event. We want to make this a citywide affair, and uh, wanted to come here and stress that invite you all, and uh, if you haven't received it, and, and those that are here, we have a, a week-long uh, program set up. There'll be a cool, special cool cars at the American Legion on Monday the 24th. Thursday at Fitz's Spare Keys will be the kickoff of the weekend. We have the Friday night football game and uh, the different uh, uh, restaurants and uh, uh, entertainment places set up to uh, greet the different uh, decades. Uh, Saturday, we have an open house at the high school, a picnic, outdoor picnic, out band, uh, tours, the whole shooting match at the, at the high school uh, at, with a banquet in the evening on, on Saturday and a brunch at White Pines on, on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, the second thing I wanted to do here is, was to invite the mayor uh, to that Fitz's event and possibly read a proclamation uh, as it pertains to York's 100 year uh, anniversary. And the third thing is support. Uh, we, need, uh, we need support from the city, get the word out that this is a, a community event and not just isolated to a York alumni. Uh, we can do that, need that with golfers. We could use golfers at the golf outing. Uh, we have uh, we, would, we hope to have a trolley going around to the different places on Friday. That was one area we could use help. And the biggest thing we're looking for is support on uh, making the uh, day at York a family uh, outing and, and make that free. So any support the city can, can provide on that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for hearing me. John R. Quigley. <clears throat> Good evening, John Quigley, President and CEO, Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, 300 West Lake Street, Suite 201, and I'm here to uh, formally promote 
Elmhurst Opoly board game, uh, a great game. We per we manufactured 1,000 games. 300 have already been sold, uh, so we're well into the sales. You can go online at the Chamber website, elmhurstchamber.org, and buy them online. And starting in September, as part of Chamber of Commerce Month, we will have various commercial and retail outlets throughout the community making games available to you. Uh, I do want to thank the City of Elmhurst. Uh, five minutes after I put the notice out that we were going to produce this game, uh, the City was our first participant to be on the game board. Uh, we appreciate that. And we sold out 75 sponsorship opportunities in two weeks, which the manufacturer tells me most communities take three to four months to do. If you get it done in two months, uh, you should be happy. Uh, they couldn't believe we got it done in two weeks. Uh, you'll look at the cover of this and see very iconic images from across the community, including York Community High School, which is featured on our cover. And York is also promoted as one of the game card sponsors. Uh, the city has a trolley as one of the tokens, uh, and we appreciate the support, of, uh, the support of the city and our chamber members for being active in this. You're going to love this game. Everybody who's played it so far has said they've had a good time. Elmhurstopoly, buy two, one to play, one to keep in the wrapper. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, Karen Ellen. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Karen Allen. I've lived at 121 Clinton Avenue for the last 18 years. And um, I, I came here in support of my neighbors as well as for myself. I don't want to um, repeat anything that they said. I do agree with everything they said. I wanna go um, at it in a little different way. Um, I wanna talk about those trees as a sound buffer. Um, we need those trees to deaden the sound between our neighborhood and the train. Um, 85 decibels is about the sound of a vacuum cleaner, and anything above that can damage hearing. Um, I went out over multiple times during the summer um, and actually took decibel reading levels of the train that goes by, and about 90% of the time that I took those readings, they were over 105 decibels. 105 decibels is about the sound of a rock concert, and at that level, you can damage hearing in about three to four minutes. Um, so these trees are very, very important to our neighborhood, and I would hope that it is in our budget to take care of them or replace them. Thank you. That's all who signed in here, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anybody in the audience who did not have an opportunity to sign in on the sign-in sheet? Um, if so, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move along then. Um, next, uh, agenda item five are announcements. Are there any announcements from the dais tonight? <coughs> okay, I don't see any of those. I would like to um, make an announcement that the Elmhurst Walk and Assistance Foundation is um, having their <laughs> annual queue for the cause and it's uh, Sunday, September 2nd at the uh, parking lot, uh, the public parking lot where the um, farmer's market is down on Villette and York. Um, it's the big annual fundraiser, fundraiser event for them. So um, if you could include that in your holiday plans, that'd be uh, much appreciated. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, is there anyone who uh, wishes to pull something for review or to vote no off of the consent agenda this evening? If so, please raise your hand. Alderman Levin? 6.9. 6.9? Yes. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so um, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, less item 6.9. Um, may I have a motion? Alderman Deuter, second. Alderman Toledo. Clerk Spencer. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Polunsky. Aye. Graham, absent. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Honquist absent. Kennedy? Aye. Milliner absent. Brennan? Aye. 
11 ayes, 0 nays, 3 absent. 11 ayes, 0 nays, 3 absent. Uh, the consent agenda is passed with the exception of item 6.9. Um, Clerk Spencer, um, could you read the recommendation of the report for item 6.9, please? Yes. It is therefore the recommendation of the Public Affairs and Safety Committee that the City Council support the Police Department epinephrine auto injector program as a potentially life saving public safety service. Signed by Scott Levin, Chairman Danny Polumsky, Vice Chairman Bob Dunn. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a report out of your committee, Alderman Levin. Um, I need a motion and a second to begin the discussion. Alderman Levin, seconded by Alderman Plumsky. Thank you. Um, obviously, we signed all the report. We're very much in support of it, but we wanted uh, to call uh, particularly to the public's attention, and I think the council would have read the report that this is the last step on a long journey. It started when this uh, EpiPen program was put into place, and we've had a number of hurdles to get over. The last one was the signing by the governor here in these very chambers that um, uh, uh, protects the medical provider who signs off on the prescription for the EpiPens from uh, incurring any personal liability. That has happened. This report is the last step uh, when adopted by the council so that we may uh, implement the program in Elmhurst. Chief Ruth has reported that we've, all the officers have been trained. We have a supply on hand. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, and it's, as I say, it's taken uh, the committee meetings on this go back to April of 2016. So we're finally here, and I just wanted to feature that. Very good. Any other comments? All right. Clerk Spencer. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Graham absent. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Honquist absent. Kennedy. Aye. Moliner absent. Brennan. Aye. Eleven ayes, zero nays, three absent. Eleven ayes, zero, zero nays, three absent. The report is passed. Um, and that concludes the consent agenda. Patty, could you hand me that booklet that's next to my spot for me, please? Um, the next item on our agenda is committee reports. And um, the committee report this time is uh, from the Finance Committee, so I'm hoping that the uh, council will indulge me just to do a quick explanation of why I put this on the, um, uh, on the committee report section of the agenda. So are there any objections to? OK. Um, so as everyone is aware, every year we go through an audit, and then the audit um, is turned in and forms the basis for the uh, comprehensive annual financial report, which Wait, is this. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm I need sorry, to. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. It's a committee to report, out of and I didn't read the okay. recommendation. I'm sorry. May I do yes, so? Yes, you may, please. Okay. Thank you. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council accept the 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report the 2017 single audit report and related communication from Sikich LLP. Signed by Kevin L. York, Chairman, Mark P. Sabatino, Vice Chairman, Tina Park, and Mike Brennan. Okay, thank you. In order to put, uh, put this item into discussion, I need a motion and a second. A motion by Alderman Sabatino, second by Alderman Brennan. Um, so, um, the CAFR report, this is a, one of the few printed reports. Now everybody used to get one of these every year, but now they're available online. There's a link to them to download them and take a look at them. This is um, the result of hundreds of hours of work by city staff and by our auditors. And um, if you can see uh, the, the report itself, everything in front of this tab is additional information that isn't required, and everything behind uh, this point is additional information that isn't required. So my point here is, is that the city is quite transparent in providing um, documentation and explanation for everything that's occurring in the city. Um, I did want to take a moment to recognize um, the city finance department. Uh, Director Trezine is out in the audience. Um, we've uh, gotten awards for our CAFR for 28 years. Um, we're um, 
I think on our 12th or 13th year of budget awards from the um, GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association. So I just wanted to take a second to, first of all, encourage everybody to take a look at this document and look at all the information that's in there. And third, just to recognize um, the, the city staff, uh, everybody in the city staff for um, managing um, in a very excellent way the finances of the city of Elmhurst. So with that, um, I'd entertain any questions. Seeing none. Sampatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Kolemski. Aye. Graham. Absent. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Conquist. <clears throat> absent. Kennedy. Aye. Moliner. Absent. Brennan. Aye. 11 ayes, 0 no, nays, 3 absent. 11 ayes, 0 uh, nays, and 3 absent. The report passes. The audit has been accepted. Um, that's great news. On to um, item number 8, which is reports and recommendations of appointed and elected officials. 8.1 is Mayor Morley, and I am not him. <laughs> um, I really don't have anything to report. Um, I'm not going to obligate him to uh, things that, uh, without talking to him about it, so I'm going to turn it over to City Manager Grabowski. Thank you. Uh, one item tonight. The city was contacted by uh, DuPage County, uh, the Environmental Division, uh, asking uh, to partner on an electronics collection event. Uh, what's happened is a lot of the uh, former events have dried up because of the market uh, for electronics uh, has dried up as well. But the, the county is looking to partner with communities to provide these uh, quarterly, even monthly. And so we will be partnering with the county uh, on an electronics collection event, and that's this Saturday, the 25th. And it's going to be hosted at our public works facility. The city's obligation is to provide a couple employees and the space for this um, collector to, um, to work and also to um, provide a forklift to uh, pick up pallets full of electronics. So all um, residents are uh, able to go to this. It's uh, free to drop off most things. They do charge for televisions and monitors, and all this information is on the website, our city website. Um, but uh, they, will pick, they will accept uh, items such as computers, office equipment, small home appliances, and other entertainment uh, items like VCRs and DVD players. Uh, so uh, if you can uh, get that word out to the, uh, the residents in the wards, that would be great. It is this Saturday from 8 until noon at the Public Works facility in Riverside Drive. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, on to other business. Uh, is there any other business? Alderman Toludo. Thank you. Um, I, with all this summer construction that is going on on 294 and in Wisconsin, it's got me thinking again about that big 290 project that's in planning stages. If we could get an update for the council at the next meeting, just a short uh, update on where that is at and, and if it's still on track and things, that would be great. Thank you. Not a problem. Good. All right. Anything else? Seeing no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Alderman Kennedy, seconded by Alderman Deuter. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One opposed? Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.